all that. Yeah, nice try, Zane. <laughs> hey, I'm Big B, and I'm Brick, and welcome to that other Lego show. This is my co-host, Zany Bricks. Hey, people. And our guest tonight, Ozzy Bricks, from Southern Hemisphere, Australia's own. How are you? Thanks for coming out in the middle of the day. I know you don't actually work, so... That's true. Able to get on here. That's true. So what were you talking about a minute ago? <laughs> oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to say it. Um, I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? Yeah, you can. You're, oh, allowed awesome. you're allowed to say stuff? Yeah, you're allowed to have an opinion. Awesome. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about swearing. Um, Language is fine, too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, my, my main thing is um, I just really hated... Um, and I, I said this on the last um, live build that I did, which, by the way, guys, every Sunday night I do a live build. Come enjoy. Um, the carbon freeze, by the way, uh, took me six hours to do, if you watch the live build. Um, <laughs> so good uh, good watching there. Um, going back to what I was talking about, the Legos, um, yeah, Jang's uh, Lego City update that he did last, I just it really made my skin crawl him hearing him whinge about how busy he was um, and is or whatever because we're talking about a person that's getting paid somewhere between 500000 and $1.5 million USD a year to build Lego. Um, I don't feel sorry for anyone like that. I don't feel sorry for anyone who doesn't have to work and everything. Like My, my city looks the way it does and I work uh, two jobs. Uh, Zany's city looks like that and he has to work very hard at his job. Um, there's a lot of city builders out there that work very hard and their cities look fantastic. I don't feel sorry for anyone like that and for all the yes people that left, oh Jangs you work so hard please don't um, burn yourself out and all that, you can all go fuck yourselves. That is all I have to say. Good deal. So I think <laughs> a lot of people have thought that at one time or another at times. So, and you can't, I mean, personally, I don't care enough to dislike him or any Lego YouTuber, really. There's some of them just not my style. It's not my thing. I don't get that. I don't know. There's some people within our own, like, circle of builders and sellers that I associate with a lot that are fans of some people that I'm just like, eh. But they ha obviously have a target demographic that they're satisfying. I have people that I am. I think some of them cross over and some of them don't at all. So I don't really care. I don't dislike them. I really don't care what they're doing. Yeah, I, don't dis the, I, don't, I won't say I sit there disliking him. That's a strong word because I don't know him from a bar of soap. What I do dislike is... Um, the rants that he puts on about how great his mock city is and look at my mock city and all this other stuff and uh, that the Lego sets don't go into his city and then all of a sudden magically he's getting Lego sets in his city. Um, he that's... does sound like a cocky little turd at times. Just <laughs> to be honest, it is what it is. I think he's pretty talented. Yeah. Oh, look, I think he's a very talented builder. Like some of the stuff that he's come up with, like I think he's very talented. Like, yeah, a hundred percent. But I don't like the direction that you know. Like some of the things he said, it comes out very, very cocky, and maybe he doesn't mean to come out like that. But and the other thing that I've noticed, and some of the other people in the AP stream have noticed, and we've all talked about it off air, is um the fact that he only responds to comments on his YouTube channel if it is negative and articulate. If it's someone praising his city or someone just saying, oh, keep up the good work or something like that, he'll never respond to you. But if you have a negative comment that is articulate, um, he'll respond to you. That's the only time he'll respond. He, he well, isn't I think he identifies, maybe, maybe if he does that, he's just identifying that it's articulate, so it's an adult. Because he's, grown, he's a grown-ass man. Nobody wants to argue with a kid, you know? That's true, but if anyone ever asks him a question, he never answers uh, answers the question either. I think I've got I've gotten I've gotten a question answered, but he didn't answer it in the uh, in the 
um, video, he sent me a message on YouTube when he made a video to answer my question. Hmm. So oh, I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one, I'm one of the chosen ones. You are. I got a video yeah. response, and I got an order placed in my store with an identification in his video where you people knew it was my store. You have Rick's stick of approval. <laughs> I think Jang is somewhere on the autism spectrum, and he caters to that demographic, and that's what it all is. Yeah. Trying to understand it outside of there or judge it outside of there, it's pointless because it's its own thing. Um, so I you really can say almost that Zany would be the anti-Jang because of who he is, his demographic is, his main demographic that he is shooting for. So... There's obviously there's more people that look at Lego that are in that demographic. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't really shoot for a demographic. I just say it how it is, and if people choose to subscribe, then they subscribe. If they choose to unsubscribe, they unsubscribe. You got I, the grumpy I, old man. I, I, I shoot for a very yeah. specific demographic. I think everybody does. <laughs> My demographic is people who want to purchase Lego from me. That being said. Welcome to that le other Lego show. It is February 19th or the 20th, midnight, and um, here with Big B Bricks and Aussie Bricks. Aussie Bricks was just going on about how much he loved Jang Bricks. So yeah. with that out of the way, we're going to start out with Aussie, I guess going right into why how you feel about when people give you detailed feedback on YouTube, I guess on both sides of the spectrum, if you know what I'm talking about. Very, very well, detailed. Well, uh, yeah. Really detailed. Yeah. You should do it exactly uh, I, this way, because it's your city, but it's my idea you should do it, and you better tell me all about it later. Yeah. Um, detailed feedback, well, it, it's kind of like an oxymoron calling it that, because it's not really detailed. They just give you feedback, and then they don't want to give you detail after that, uh, or as I've found in Instagram especially where people tell me hey Ozzy you should really do your Avengers Tower landing pad a different way um, th there's a certain technique that you can use that can do it hit me up on direct message so I'll hit them up on direct message I go yeah I'm all, I'm all ears let me know, let me hear it and they go oh I'm actually you know what I'm sure you already know the technique don't worry about it but you should do that anyway there's one completely blasé. Um, then I get other ones like um, your harvest too crowded. Please um, please like and subscribe my channel as well. Um, they're, they're fun. Or your harbors too crowded. Uh, can we seek figure trade? Um, or your airport really sucks. You should tile it up or something like that. Can we seek figure trade? Um, yeah, I, I love it. I, I love the feedback. It's awesome. It makes you, would, me feel you would never tile an airport <laughs> runway that obviously needed a very flat surface for landing things coming in at high velocities. You want a very bumpy surface for that, right? Yeah. Well, I, I want to when you're planning it. Everything, everything in my city. At everyone needs to like the the people that watch my city updates a lot. Not, have pretty much picked up on me saying this quite a bit and also the AP stream. I have left the city in a certain state and the harbour in a certain state and all that just to spite people now. Um, so do, you think, do you think you need to put more sharks in there? Definitely. 100%. 100% there needs to be more sharks because I know for a fact it pisses off quite a few YouTubers um, and I want to have a lot of sharks there. Um, I know for a fact that there are people who have commented on my city about uh, how much they like the Big Bang Theory and they really hate the fact that I beat it up every time I show those figures. And um, stay tuned for the next city update because uh, there's a big thing that happens to the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> big ideas, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just saying like big ideas, big ideas, yeah. not Big Bang. It's, 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 um, there's a little hint on the latest Instagram post that I put up. <laughs> okay. Big Bang comes with some other stuff later on. Not in this show, but in the future. Yeah. Nice. Wait, Once I have my money. Gonna... Okay, so Ozzy. 
basically yes. what you're saying is you don't like it when people give you feedback that are demanding about it. Look, I, I don't I don't like it, but at the same time, you know, it, it doesn't sit there making me furious. Um, I, it just, you know, I just go, okay, well, we've got another toss pot here, no problem. Um, that's that's the way I look at it. And what and does make you furious? What makes me what makes me furious is um, uh, this complete. I don't know. When it comes to Lego, not much, not much. Um, spammers kind of kind of will get there. But people who attack me, and I, I think um, Zany purposely brought me in by design with this. Uh, people who attack me with um, the fake Lego um, side of things. So um, everyone knows that I bought a whole bunch of Iron Man suits because TF Bricks was kind enough to give me the bright idea about uh, Hall of Armor. So I took that book on board. And um, the problem is buying a Lego Hall of Armor. I did the calculations, and it would have cost me around three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty dollars. So there was a company out there. Oh, I won't name names in terms of the company, but they do a Hall of Armor suite, and it cost me. I think it was seven or fifteen dollars, something like that. Uh, it was uh, uh, quite a negligible amount. Including postage, right? So I think all up, I think I paid, including postage, I think it was 20 bucks all up, to tell you the truth. Um, I bought that, did a video on it. Uh, I was quite critical on the pieces. I was Actually, I was very critical on it, but it did what it needed to do, which was that you can see the Hall of Armor from the outside of the building. That's all it needed to do. It didn't need to be this whiz-bang quality and all that, so that's why I got it. And the hate I received from that video, uh, I was it really pissed me off because it was hate from people that don't really realise. Like they were sitting there saying, "Oh, how can you support a company that you know is stealing from Lego and all this other stuff?" And all, you know, and you know, people like you are keeping those companies in business and all this. What these people don't realise when they write this and. Myself and Down Under, not to throw Down Under under the bus because I know he doesn't like confrontation that much, but um, myself and Down Under were having a big talk about this. And what a lot of people don't realise is in Australia, we pay an exorbitant amount for Lego. Um, in terms of, we get very little Lego coming in here into the country in the shops, and the Lego that we don't get, we have to buy from overseas, and shipping costs are. Uh, well, it's a lot. It's a lot. So we pay a lot. Yeah, well, we pay a lot for the hobby. And, um, Shipping to Australia is officially half price tonight. Anywhere in the southern hemisphere, half price. Well, there you go. I'll, um, I'll have to break my uh, Lego ban at the moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, at, at, it, it just pisses me off. It p really pisses me off when people uh, write and say comments about, um, yeah, my excursion into fake Lego, which was only one excursion, but uh, an excursion nonetheless, and saying things like that because they don't realise how much we actually spend. They don't realise that, yes, my collection might be less than yours, but I probably spent more or the same amount uh, as that person. So it, it really yeah. got under my skin. Um, I bought seven Avengers towers. I think I'm due to be able to do something on the side, is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, it was it, by the end of it, it was eight Avengers towers that were, that went into that bloody thing. Um, it was countless Big B orders. It was countless brick stacker orders. It was countless bricks for bricks from Chris orders. Um, you know, so yeah, I. I I haven't even dreamt about tallying up how much I spent on that tower. Um, I don't want to because I know it's going to make me sick. But um, I think I deserved at least one level of that tower to cost me a little bit less than $450. So that's, that, that's what pisses me off when people attack my, um, my choice, especially when it comes to a very clear monetary uh, saving in that regard. I'll get off my high horse now.
Yeah, I I mean, like I was showing you before, I bought this set, the Fantastic Four ones that you can get from um, all the Chinese distribution, directory sellers, whatever. And the whole set of eight of them costs like ten bucks total, including shipping, and they're great for minifigs that Lego never has produced and likely never will. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like them. I have no problem with, like, the Hall of Armor type stuff where they don't produce at least half of the, those in any form. Yeah, well, it, it seems like all of a sudden that they're starting to produce all of a sudden this... <laughs> Well, there's uh, a so you've got to remember that uh, Fox owns the license for one, and Marvel owns the license for another. Yep. They're at war with each other, so anything that Fox owns, Marvel's probably not going to be uh, commissioning sets for. So you're not going to get your Fantastic Four. You're not going to get anybody who's a mutant. And well, no, they did do X. They've done X. Right, right. That, that's probably the last X Men that you're going to see for a long, long time. Well, even when they did that, and they really focused on basing it off the comic version of X Men, they never did. Right, they put out a they put out a final a good final one. I don't know if we're going to see another one for a few years until the feud's over. Oh, I highly suggest everybody go pick up that set if you want to get any of those mutants at an affordable price. Yeah, it's a and it's on clearance. I mean, down. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah, and you can get a set of it. It's on clearance pretty much everywhere for like twenty bucks. That wasn't Ozzie even. Ozzy knows all about that. I don't even think that was even released here. So there you go. Yeah, X Men Jet. Oh yeah, no, that wasn't at the shops over here. I'm sure it was at Bruce's Big W because for some reason, I think they look after him. But <laughs> but um. Yeah, it wasn't at mine. Um, you know, for some reason, Sydney doesn't get Lego very often. I don't know why, being a capital city and everything. But oh well. Well, that was a good set. That's that's an awesome story. I thought so. <laughs> that's why I asked specifically that if you knew all about it, because I figured you. Well, I know nothing ever goes on clearance, right? Yeah, well, nothing ever goes on clearance over here, and if it does, I'll be lucky to get 20% off. Yeah, and you're you get 20% no more bricks off to, uh, to ship you one of those. Yeah, I think I will. I will. They're I've, cheap, I've, man. Yeah, I've already spoken to Harold. I, I, we're, we're, um, I may as well talk about it on here as well. We're, Harold and I are commissioning a Swine Brothers, uh, or sorry, Swine Cousins, um, um, Sig Fix. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, in homage to the Fine Brothers, um, per se, and um, we're we're going to do a lot of little funny videos about it and stuff like that. But Harold's going to uh, basically shop them shop them around on Bricklink, and I'm going to be basically um, yeah, just he's going to send me those when he gets them, and we go from there. But um, stay tuned. We're they're going to look pretty good by the end of it. I know Zany's really excited about that. I don't. I don't care at all, actually. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I think it's neat. I have a lot of other minifigs that I would do before then, before focusing on them, I guess. Unless if I had I'd, I'd say get that. I'd around. say get that set, man. Get that set. It's cheap now, and if you already got a package coming from them, get it for twenty bucks instead of spending fifty on the figs in two years. That's actually a good point. Okay. Have Harold pick you up one of those X-Men sets. Yeah, I will. Clearance. I will. All right. Harold, you heard it. It's the X-Men jet set. It could be... It's, what is it? It has the... Um, Blackbird. Blackbird, whatever. It has Blackbird and it has one of those Sentinels. Sentinels That's and some good minifigs. Which figs are in it? You get Wolverine. Magneto, Cyclops, and Storm. Yeah. It's a set. And then you well have worth, the Well worth it right there. I mean, Magneto comes in a couple, I think, two sets. 
But uh, Storm, I think it's Classic Wolverine, and Cyclops. Yeah, it is Classic Wolverine. So, what it's definitely it's like a second generation X-Men. Is that what it would be? After the, uh, after the giant book or whatever? Yeah. Is that about right chronologically, comic book wise? I don't know. I never followed X Men at all. Somebody in the, so, I, I'm talking to people in the comments, man. Yeah. Okay, so it is. Um, let me go through this did, really quick. I did schedule some random, unintelligible ramblings and rants by myself. So. Give me. Yep. So I'm gonna get through this whole gear thing since I built examples. So people often send me messages, thick and bricks, about how to do gear stuff. So I'm going to show a couple gear examples. Very simple. This is definitely 101 type stuff. Um, everyone should be able to understand everything. So I guess I'm going to start off with probably one of the most basic gears that you're going to get, and it's for transforming between two... Um, two planes, and basically it's a screw gear. So this is a box, and you'll probably find the piece like this. I'll take it all apart. But like this is from the Death Star. They have one because I'm guessing it's used for a crank or something for the elevator. Um, but you just put a standard Technic screw gear, pop it in there. You'll find them in a lot of other current Technic sets. They're usually in black, I believe. But um, pop that in there, and it sort of pops in place. It, you don't need to put anything in to hold it in. Then a standard Technic gear. Push everything through. Oh, sorry. Warrior. Okay. So, basically this is... Why I'm showing this is because I never see them actually used. Screw gears are awesome. Screw gears are a torque monster. I can sit there and I can... Look it. I am trying to push it. It will push up my finger because the thing just generates a ton of torque. Um, here's the cool thing about screw gears, too. If this isn't moving, this is not moving, and this is not going to move this. It's a one-way gear, basically. You can't spin the screw gear by spinning this wheel. You can spin that wheel with extreme strength and very low speeds through that. Um, you hook it up. You can always, I'll demonstrate up gearing, but you can always sit there and make the thing spin really fast through there, just realize when you sit there and you go between a high torque, low torque, high torque, low torque drive chain, you're going to cause problems, and you're going to strip out gears, too. So on to that basic can you put gear a, design. Can you fit a torque in there? What was that? Can you fit a torque gear in there? Torque gear in here. No. You, yes, you can. It is the standard size, or the um, which I'm going to show you a torque gear, actually, or it's a clutch gear. These are called clutch gears, correct? Or clutch gears. Clutch gears, yeah. So why they're clutch gears is because they have clutches. If you see I'm holding this and I'm spinning it and nothing's spinning but the gear will still spin, it's important because when you motorize it and it gets something blocked, it's going to burn out your motor. That will start fires even. Start fires even. If you sit there and you're blocking a electric motor, it will likely start a fire if you leave it there long enough and it gets enough juice to, at least. Yeah. Probably won't I with the battery packs from Lego. I purposely don't sell those in my store to intentionally burn out people's motors so it'll melt their Lego so they have to buy more. <laughs> yeah. So clutch gears are awesome. This is the key part. You always begin wherever a central point where a lot of torque is going to be applied, so like manual pressure or a motor, use a clutch gear so that you don't kill the motor and you don't kill everything else and you don't cause everything to fly apart. So basically with it, I'm using a big gear and I'm going down to a small gear. The amount of spokes it takes 
or one rotation that I'm doing, the amount of spokes is a lot more than this. That means that for every time I'm rotating, it's rotating this a lot, of, a lot more times. That's basically up gearing or down gearing. Is that is that's down gearing when you go down like that? Because it's technically not going down. It's going with the larger ratio. When you take a large gear and put it on a smaller one, so that you uh, so that it spins more quickly, it would be up, right? And then when you take a small gear and put it onto a large can, one, so it yeah. spins more, it would be down gearing. Anyway, so, so you're going to a you're going to a higher gear ratio. Yeah, and, and that's the point. I'm going from go if you want to go faster, we'll just go this way. If you want to go faster, go from big to small. And if you want to go slower, but with a higher torque, and remember when you go faster, you have less torque, so less power to actually cause things to push. Um, when you go slower, you go small to big, basically. So the more turns, they'll turn a lot, but it's only turning the final one a slower amount of times. So here's what's happening. This small one is going to this little one. This little one is just hooked up with a axle going to another big one. It's the biggest standardized um, Technic gear going to, which just sits there, spinning to a small one, which then goes on this side to a little thingy that I just put there. So I can sit there and I can spin it, and if I put my finger there, it'll still spin because of clutch gear, so it won't burn out. But you can spin it, and it'll go really, really fast. To see how fast it's going, I'm spinning this, and you can watch the actual red dial go really, really slow. So that's the basics of up gearing, down gearing, and just as far as going from big to small. You always have to remember your gear ratio. You don't, don't want to fit in gears that fit to whatever you're trying to reach, it doesn't work that way. You can do that, but you'll end up causing something that just doesn't work logically. And always go one direction if you can within a drive chain. Always go from from a lower torque to a higher torque or from a higher torque to a lower torque along a drive chain. Don't sit there and mix it up constantly between. It causes just points of pressure for things that blow apart. So that is basically, this is 99% of your gear assemblies are going to be just simple things put together to either transfer power from a motor to a mechanized system or whatever. And you can also, by flipping things through on axles between sides, you're actually changing the rotational axle or rotational axis that's going. So um, it's good stuff. That is basic, basic stuff. Then you have a third type of gear types I'm going to cover, and it's this. You probably have these. They come in sets often. Um, these are awesome gear boxes. They are the gear boxes on BrickLink. And um, if you have one of these, make sure you have at least something to... Um, a plate to go on top because that's sort of what makes it into a complete gearbox. Uh, here it is. So the great part about these is you can make modular gearboxes and then you can sort of stack them into whatever shapes you need and whatever functions you need. You can split stuff off on each tier. So in this case, each one goes in and it goes through. Um, it spins between the both axes and then it transfers down to the bottom. So it spins this, transfers to the bottom, and on the bottom it hooks into a drivetrain which, like in this situation, it's going to actually transfer that momentum between all of them, chain together. So it's going from there to there to there and through an axle going across there to there to there. Why would you do something like this? Tanks. If you're building a tank mock, this is your drivetrain, basically. If you use anything but this, you're not going to have the torque you need because all of these are one-to-one -one gear ratios. So they're not going to lose or gain anything through the gearing that you do. However, what they will allow is you to use XL motors, which have nice high torque. Use those to be able to power eight treads at one time and for it to actually be able to go forward. 
if you haven't messed with that before, when you start daisy chaining power onto multiple motors, it doesn't work. So you have to sort of find a motor big enough and design a drivetrain small enough that it, a single motor can drive a single drivetrain. You can't sort of chain them together. You can, but it, it becomes messy. And Lego's horrible with their tolerances when it comes to their electrical motors. So uh, that's the overview of gear. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, then you should have. Now Ozzy's going to rant more. I'm what? You are. About? Fun with flag. Sorry? I guess um I guess I missed half answer. of what you were saying because I was laughing at the comments. Oh that's the swill. I think half you're probably gonna have to redo it, Zadie. Everybody was sitting in there. Uh no more bricks is just letting the band hammer fall where it may. Oh, good. Well, outstanding. So anyone that actually wants to learn a little, that knows nothing about Gears at all and wants to learn a little bit about it can go back and watch the replay. Tomorrow or after this. Watch yeah, the whole show. This. Just when there's a good, posted, Go back and from watch From the 15-minute mark to the 30-minute mark. Yeah, because it is a good, if you know, if you don't get gearing at all, it's just something that's sort of mystical to you, that should explain everything you need to know to get started and to start to think of ways to utilize it to do what you want it to do. In city building, use it to open doors. Use it to actually do automated doors and other stuff. I do it. I've been doing a lot of my doors that way lately. So, No more brick says he has no idea what you said. He didn't pay attention at all. He was just slamming away with a hammer. No more bricks is a little man, so it is what it is. He has a big hammer. He's going to use it. So you can make elevators with this. That's a good point. Um, is Fick in the comments? Fick, you here? I think Zane is talking to you. What here was all the knowledge you need to know to make Lego elevators. And basically using three different types. I can... All three ways have their own way of doing it. With this, you can just have a... Little, you can attach a spool to it, and then you'd have a little crankshaft or a motor that pulled a string up and down that supported the elevator cage, which sort of sucks and is lossy. But so this basically, one you can, almost everybody in the comments right now, all they're saying is, is Zany going to do a little segment on his channel with more detail on this that we can watch as well? And will this be an evolving series, they're also asking. Nobody's saying that at all in the comments. I'm reading them. No, 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 no. I'm no, no, so no, no well. that's what this series is for. I'm not going. I'm going to keep all of that to here. Okay. okay. All right. No, no, that's that's fine then. I'm totally down with that. So we made a whole eleven cents so far. So Zanny, what's it like being the leader of the T files? The leader of the T. Oh, Big B. No, you. I do. I don't. I blocked half of them. I don't even <laughs> communicate with them, and it's nothing against the T falls. It's just I have no interest in interacting with like ones will make just stupid comments, and I'm like, you have nothing of substance that you could ever provide to anything I post. So I just block them. I've come to that. I guess I don't care. I haven't come to anything. I just don't care. I never have cared too much. Um, no, that's not a general statement about all of them. That's just a, that, I mean, no. individual, there's some individuals that are good. That's a, just a general statement, you know, like shotgun. That's a shotgun oh, statement. Yeah, I don't care about, like, perception of it. I don't, I'm not going to interact with anyone I don't feel like interacting with. That's what it comes down to. So if I don't feel like interacting with you, I will just not interact with you whatsoever. What if someone left a very articulate comment on your video <laughs> that was uh, derogatory? I will usually ignore it because I'll usually not even bother reading it in the first place, to be honest. <laughs> I, I do read a lot. I read comments, actually videos, I do. Usually derogatory comments, I'll just delete and not bother and block the person because I don't care enough to respond to them or to waste any more time on it. 
derogatory stuff. I don't care about a negative comment. If you don't like something you want to post about it, I'm not going to delete that shit. Whatever. If you just post something stupid, like, hey, come subscribe to my channel. I think this sucks. Or that's a waste of whatever, but you've never posted anything else. It's like, what the fuck do you have to add to anything you ever are going to say to me? So I, I will just block you. I don't care enough to not do that. It wastes yeah, that's, effort that's, down the that's line. That's my problem. Like, I, I fucking care every once in a while. And they go and do stupid shit, and I remember, yeah, yeah, they're like, you know, 12 to 14-year-old boys, and they're going to make a lot of dick and fart jokes, and, you know, that's basically what the humor comes from. So just given that, like, all right, they screwed up. Let me see if I can do anything to make anything better and uh, get it to the point where it's almost good, and then they tweak again and fuck it all up just like they just did. And that's the point. And there's nothing wrong with that. They have their own community, and that's awesome. They can do their own thing. I mean, I I thought the whole T-Fall talk was a joke until you clarified that it actually was a real thing. I thought it was like people making fun of that little like. No, no, it's a real thing, and I think they should do it and just do whatever the hell they do and do their thing. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Take, that's take, it like, take it like it's a real show and, and be professionals about it and, and do it. Yeah, and that's awesome. Obviously, though, that's not what I'm going for, and that's cool, too. You don't want anything to do with me, and I don't want anything to do with a lot of you, to be honest. No, they want everything to do with you. They want everything to do with you. You're Papa Zany. You're that weird yeah. uncle that you put beer in a baby bottle. You know? Yeah, the thing is, I'm not... It's, I have no problem with people that are just cool and that are just like, hey, you know, you have cool stuff. I will, I appreciate those comments. I appreciate people, you know, commenting positively and whatever. And it's it's the weirdness when you start getting creepy. I'm just not going to put up with that shit or deal with it at all. I when you start commenting on videos about like, did you read my message and shit? You're not my fucking wife. Yeah, I, I got divorced multiple times in the past to prevent that sort of shit in my personal life. I'm not going right. to deal with like kids on the internet doing that crap. I don't even want to address you because I feel uncomfortable not addressing your parent. So, so then my, I will my just overly block you. specific question and request for your city that we start selling that weird Brazilian hallucinogenic drug that makes you shit all over yourself and vomit all over the place isn't going to be available in my Lego store in your city? No, so the only things that will be available for my ci in my city are weed and blue meth. Those are the two drug houses I have in my city, or drug centers, and that will be the only thing. I have no plans. To, it's not like a drug society. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted. I just wanted. To, I wanted them to shit all over themselves and vomit all over themselves. There, I saw it was on. A, there's a show on Netflix called Chelsea, Chelsea Does, and she discusses different things. And there was one that uh, she goes and does some weird things. She's a weird lady. Yeah, she is a weird lady. She's sort of full of herself at times these days. <laughs> a little bit, and I think she's really in denial that she's got some substance issues. Yeah, no, that's cool, and I don't care about that. It's just she's sort of full of herself. For oh, no, but that's movement. part of her being full of herself. Like, her friends in the show were, were taunting her, like, and she was just in denial because she's so full of herself. It's cool. It's one person doing their own thing. I'm not judging that. I was just more the full of herself and denial yeah. part. And, and that's another... So in the comments, they're asking about the whole sub-you, sub-back thing. I... I don't care enough to subscribe to you. That's what it comes down to. If I cared enough, I would have subscribed to you. If you are just letting me know about your channel, awesome. That's cool. Like, if you think that if you copy-paste or spam something, I'm never going to look at your channel, ever. <laughs> I'm just going to delete it and not respond to you. Um, if you actually, like, have content of substance and you send me a message saying, hey, this, I respect your opinion, or I think you'll like this, and it's cool, you should check this out, I might check it out, if it's just some, like, you created one video in low lighting of you holding up six blocks in some formation for 30 seconds, and then you expect me to subscribe to you, that's never going to happen, 
I have enough stuff pull up in my stream, I can't keep up with it. So I subscribe to stuff I like to. I'm going to subscribe to a bunch of the big Lego YouTubers, you'll see. Like, I think you can look at my subscriber, or what, who I'm subscribed to. I just don't care to, because I'm not interested in their content. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be interested in their content. I'm just not, so I'm not going to subscribe to them. And I will look at their videos if they, like, post a video that shows up outside of there, like in the recommended videos. I'll absolutely look at them, but I rely on that to get videos outside of, like, the whole thing that I actually subscribe to. And it's a small amount of people. Same thing with Instagram. I have enough photos coming up in my stream thing for me to actually watch, and I like to look at them, and I probably view a lot of the ones if I'm subscribed or following you on Instagram. I'm probably looking at your photos at least. But you shouldn't care about that, to be honest, <laughs> if I'm looking at your photos. Right, uh, TF I'm not going to subscribe to you otherwise. TF Bricks wants you to pose so we can do a selfie of you or something. Oh, speaking right. of selfies, Ozzy. Ozzy here. So just a little background on Ozzy Bricks. Ozzy Bricks is not your regular, I guess, stereotype of the Lego YouTuber demographic. Ozzy Bricks runs a self-defense studio out... Yep in Australia, and he likes to teach people how to kill people and beat them up while taking selfies. So, <laughs> the, drill, the drill wasn't that. You took it out of context. The drill was basically because the drill is that you have to send a message to a number on the whiteboard, and the message was uh, what you did that weekend. So your brain is sitting there th knowing that you have to do this message but at the same time, you've got an attack coming at you. So you're using one part of your brain compared to the other part of your brain. So the amygdala is complete, is basically all of a sudden being used and then not being used. Used, being used. And it's about the how well you can engage your fight or flight system effectively. That's all. When do you teach them how to use the Bowie knife? I don't. <laughs> That gets me arrested. That gets me arrested, Zadie. I, I, I teach I teach the special forces guys how to use that type of stuff, but not Bowie knives, but other types of knives. That, do you say that in your thing though? Do you go like that's there's a that's a knife? No, I don't. I don't. But um, I do kick a lot of people in the nuts. Um, <laughs> Didn't think I, so. Every but... class, every class, there's probably about well, I don't know, probably about thirty or forty kicks to the nuts. So, yeah, and they're hard hits. I, I don't I don't hold back. So, so do you at least tell them to wear their cups, or are they putting yeah, it? No, 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 it's mandatory. Mandatory. You're not allowed inside the studio without a steel groin guard. Steel, steel, good. Yeah. good. No, it needs no, to be steel. Yeah. No, those fucking yeah. cheap polycarbon shit. No, no, that stuff breaks. I, I, I know. Yeah, that's I, uh, break. I bought one of those UFC. You know, with a UFC logo all over it, thinking, oh yeah, UFC, that must be great. Went went to one training session, it broke in half, and nearly. Chopped right in, so yeah, that's too you much. You need detail, to get the one but... that they have in Super Troopers. It's bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the steel groin guard does the trick. It's it does the trick. So, have you ever dented one, like with a steel toe boot on? Not a steel one, because um, it's the the curvature of the steel one is just yeah, it'll, it'll, that would take uh, interesting kick to be able to dent one of those. So this downward, is downward force, right? Downward force on the top of on the uh, top of it. Good no, we the support have, of a cup here. All right, so if if we're saying this is the cup, the groin's right yeah, here, I'm doing, I'm doing the legs here, are by the side. Our design of the kick is supposed to go here with the ball of the foot, and it goes right up to the pelvic bone, in effect crushing the groin muscle against the pelvic bone. So immediately hospitalization. Yeah, Kyle so, lost in one of his boys too. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. So that shows what kind of diversity we have in the AFOL community. And, you know, we all come from different walks of life. So, um, yeah. Big B, I think you had something to to rant about. So I think this would be a good time for you to do that. Man, you are, like, on the 15-minute mark and shit, too. Do you have, like, a little mini alarm there or something? Seriously. <laughs> 
Like Ozzy went from zero to fifteen. You you went from like fifteen to thirty. Then we had a little break of fifteen. And damn, man. You do it. All man. right. So I tried to uh, tried to score some Deadpool heads, and these look good right here. But when you get in ultra close, which we're not going to be able to with this camera and my bandwidth, there's a picture posted to Instagram. You start to notice the inconsistencies in the print. And it's supposed to have a filled eye, and that's one of the um, the big things. Is you will always see the completed eye. And Lego prints the light colors first, and then the dark colors, which is the standard in the industry, because that way you have a very crisp edge around where the the two contrasting colors meet. Um, and these were printed white on top of black, which is very amateur. It's what you would do if you didn't really know uh, about quality control. Um, and also the edges are crisp, uh, the two eyes are offset, and on the Deadpool one it's like one, if it's one PX off, and in this one it's about three, so it's just, it's not really that noticeable, but if you look at it closely. Anyways, it's, the thing is it's a, it's printed on a, uh, an authentic Lego element, so they are very easy to pass off as being legit, and I mean, I, I really, I wanted these to be real. Um, I wanted them to be real because this would have been a great little profit right here. Like, this little bag right here probably would have scored me half a G, you know? And um, I'm just not willing to forego the future of the marketplace for a short-term profit. So I, I, called, I called bad on it and uh, basically just exposed it and made a post in the, uh, the forums about it just to let people know. And there's also uh, other people that have purchased these and you know let them know as well that they were fake and they don't feel that they're fake. But uh, I got negative feedback on it. I left negative feedback to the seller, and uh, we both put in a dispute feedback thing with Bricklink, and my feedback was removed, and the seller's was not. So not saying that. There was a decision made on anything like that, but and uh, these will be destroyed um, on camera for proof. So taking suggestions um, on the Instagram account on the video that I have for the weekly vlog about how to destroy these. Uh, Zany had an idea of melting them into a Lego mold and shaping them into a brick so that he could form a counterfeit clone whatever, like, I don't know what the hell he's going to do with it, but I'm actually working on uh, an idea for that. So that one will come to fruition. Um, there'll be a few other Deadpool deaths that we definitely will have happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're all going to be destroyed as per PayPal regulation when counterfeits are caught. Um, you do not return them to the seller. You make sure that PayPal knows they are counterfeits, and uh, PayPal's policy is to destroy the counterfeits. So we're so gonna have fun with it. To be clear, here's just one note on that, and I just know this from outside the Lego marketplace, and maybe it's specific with Lego. Uh, PayPal, I doubt it. Destroy means to make non-functional. To right. So I mean, I could I could wipe the face off of yeah, them. I could do exactly. I could do all those stuff, and, and people have suggested that. But as a Lego seller, um, I don't sell wiped uh, wiped heads in my store or wiped torsos or anything like that. I make it a point not to. Um, I seek out uh, figs that I know have a blank torso, and then you know pull the arms off them so that torso will be available for people making monochrome figs. So I try to keep mine since I'm going long term, you know, at least another let's see, 13, 12 years uh, until college starts for Big D. So I got a little bit of investment time ahead, so I want to make sure that you know there's at least watchers on the market, and I try to do what I can. Uh, you gotta wait when you call that PayPal will. Uh, I opened up the claim, immediately escalated it to whatever where PayPal reviews it, and then phoned PayPal to notify them because there was a counterfeit situation going on. So does then, uh, 
Did PayPal lock down his account? No, uh, PayPal put it like a they put a watch on it, so they watch for other um, cases of counterfeits to come up because they're never going to do a one one off thing, and I would never expect them to. Right. Yeah. You know? Um. But yeah. I would expect them to. They shouldn't. I would expect them to though. Over time, over time, once once it's a proven thing, I wouldn't expect them to do it off one person. I mean, it's a plus. It's commerce, man. It's what you know. The blood. It's the blood of America is commerce. But like yeah. it or like it or not, that's the blood of America. PayPal makes bad decisions historically. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And I've read about some of the destruction of counterfeit decisions that they made too, that are absolutely terrible. You know, but. It is what it is. In this case, in this case, it's not a Stradivarius, you know. So that being said, Ozzy is going to destroy some stuff on camera right now, right? What stuff? I don't know, man. No. Nah, Let's see. You like give a groin shot to some Chima. I think you have a beer in front of you, right? No, Pepsi Max. Oh, it's like, oh, it's like 8 you don't need to destroy man. that. I was going to say you can destroy the beer, but that's not. <laughs> Although we should try to get a uh, Southern Hemisphere guest on and get him hammered during the show. Warrior. Oh, Dan Under will do that. No, that's the code. That's the drinking code word for the show. Okay. Each episode, there's a different code word that says drink for a little side drinking game. So if we say well, warrior, they're supposed to drink. So every time warriors said, they do the warrior drink for because the, they're warriors. Warrior. Well, Dan warrior. Under will definitely get drunk for you on the show. Here's a good one, Big B. And this is actually, you're treading the line there to a, I get in the way that you bought them, they're misrepresented, so that's the end of the story. But as far as being a counterfeit versus a custom print on Lego parts, Ralph Dubro, Ralph De, Ralph, I can never pronounce your last name and I never will be able to. I'm not Italian. So. Right, so to answer Ralph, and that's actually a really good question, and the difference between a counterfeit and a custom is... How it is, how it is worded that it's sold. If you, if you, I have less of a problem with somebody taking even an authentic Lego element and putting the same shit on it that Lego did, and saying that I did it, than saying no, this is the real deal. You know, that's all. I want to know that it's legit. That's it. You know. So do you want to name and shame who it is right here? Or no? no. No, 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 no. That's easy enough for people to research. It's like four clicks. Uh, if I were you, I'd send it to Jang. You'd I'd do what? Send it to Jang? Uh, I'd send all the heads to Jang. Why would you do that? No, uh, I will not <laughs> misuse a uh, a customer's address or information that I may have received in the transaction of a business deal on BrickLink when they purchased from me. And then no, filmed it. It was, it was, it was only a joke, assuming that I wasn't orders. a customer. I'm still, I'm still, I got, I got that Jang feedback this week, and it immediately rolled off my page within like a day, so I didn't get too happy about it, but okay. it finally came in, so. Did you screenshot it and post it up? I screenshotted it personally. It was a personal shot. I didn't. I didn't put it out there because you know, I'm a professional and all that. You know, you're not sounding like a professional right now. It was a personal screenshot. <laughs> I don't know if Chad's brick hobby is here, but he'd be having a field day with what you're saying right now. <laughs> he is. Chad's brick hobby is absolutely here. He hasn't made a comment for a while. I have no idea who's an adult or who's not anymore. Lloyd's I'll definitely just... a teeth hall. Go get him. Uh, I've been pretty much banning everyone. <laughs> oh, there's stuff to be here. Dave, looking... Dave Frost is an adult, and so is Mr. Dragon. I know Mr. Dragon. I know Dave Frost. Or, yes. Um, yeah, so... I've been working on my Philly Brickfest mock 
a haunted house, which is actually a ride. It goes into a haunted carnival that we're doing as a collaborative mock. But this is basically a cart ride where it, the carts go through on track, on chain, basically through the whole ride. Um, I chose instead of power functions to go 9 volt just because I, I have a bunch of 9 volt stuff and more importantly these these motors are so much more useful in certain areas than the power functions one are and then since I'm going 9 volt I can do I got Legos loaded onto my RCX unit and I used to do like simple C programs for it but it allows me to control what I want to do a lot better with sensors like this which will allow me to count the number of turns in a variable gearing that it's actually made regardless of what gear it's on so it's um, good stuff. I'll be covering that stuff, all the electronic and um, 9 volt RCX stuff and doing computerized control of LEGO in a future 15 minute segment. So there you go. And they have IR controllers, and that's the best part about it. And that Bluetooth crap. <laughs> I, was trying to get, I was trying to get Ozzy's laugh, his reaction to my comment. <laughs> that was just bad. <laughs> Michael Tican has a Lego foot finish. Just so everyone knows. No, I think that's I think that's a Michelle. That's what I think it's a Michelle. Yeah, it was Michelle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's Michelle the way. Michelle, I th if it's a Michelle, I think maybe she wants Ozzy to show your feet or something. No, I think it's Michelle A from uh, the NWA posse. Oh well, block now. What the, ah, come on, that could have been fun. We got three minutes to spend. I didn't plan 15 minutes. I don't do homework like Zany. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to up my game or something. So we have like three minutes to kill, and Ozzy is quiet instead of. Well, I think we should just pull that. Pull that. Um. Gear up and um, just show everyone a three-minute um, video of that gear turning that you got in your hand. What was that? Oh, Will actually has a question. Oh, here we go. Question with a convention: Are you limited to the size table, or how does that work for displaying? So by default, a table is just a standard eight by four folding table, and um, if you want more than that. You just ask the convention organizer, and usually they will thank you for filling more of their space so that they have less empty space. I mean, there's some that obviously really crowded ones. They're probably few and far between where they fill up all of their area. But um, from what I hear, and I have limited experience in it, but from what I hear, you, it's pretty universal. Just ask for more space and you'll get it. But a table size is 8 by 4 feet. Standard folding table that you can get, you can pick up at any hardware store for 20 bucks, 20 or 40 bucks, and build on it yourself. You're not paying to exhibit, though, are you? Do you have to pay an exhibitor fee or something like that? It really depends. On, um, like, well, you don't pay any extra fees for it. Not that I'm aware of for exhibiting. Okay. They, um, you pay your conference pass. Yeah, I think they want you to exhibit and use as much as you possibly can. Yeah, I know the one back here, Brick Universe, which is just its second year here in Raleigh. That one is definitely needs builders, and they'll they'll probably give you the entrance and everything if you do display in there at least enough to take some space up. Oh, cool. All right, so we're coming to a close. Ready for the uh, the weekly brick, brick toss or the bus toss? Ozzy, who's uh, who's our next week's guest? Uh, it will be down on the bricks. Really? Down on the bricks. Next week. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Are you going to let him know that you volunteered him? Yep, yeah, I'll let him know. All right, cool. That's also part of it. Less work for us. Thank you.
More enjoyment for everyone else to uh, throw their friends to the wolves. All in uh, all in good spirits, of course. So next Thanks week we'll be on. having some mechanized fun. So join in, and um, I'm sure Down Under Bricks will be drinking and talking about Star Wars Lego. What are you yeah, going to be doing next week? That is, um, what was that? What are you doing next week? Uh, something mechanized. Something mechanized. I'm not sure, like a mechanized contraption. All right. I'm, thinking, uh, I'm going people, between two different things. We'll see. People, people in the comments uh, after the show ends, like, give me ideas of what you want me to cover, and I will. Yeah, and give me ideas what you want me to build or show. If you have a building technique that you want to learn about and that you think I might know about or might be able to at least display in some sort of demonstration, let me know, and I will um, probably do something on them. Yeah, and give me better ideas of ways to talk about slinging brick in a room full of creators so it doesn't sound fucking awkward. And that's all by... Click the live thing off before I have to go and drink.